Fantasy Edge with Jonathan Chan, Kevin Quo, Richard Seville. Hello and welcome to the Fantasy Edge. I am Richard Seville of FantasySixPack.net and joining me shortly, Kevin Quo, also of FantasySixPack.net. Jonathan Chan uh, is unable to join us this week as uh, he has... Uh, a little bit of a heavy workload this week, so uh, he'll be back next week. Uh, we just finished watching the uh, Seattle Seahawks defeat the uh, Philadelphia Eagles in a very um, not a greatest uh, football game. I don't think anybody expected it to be a great football game, but uh, um, big uh, big yardage by uh, DK Metcalf, and that's about it. DK Metcalf was practically the star of this game, um, even though he didn't score any touchdowns. I mean, he was targeted a couple times in the end zone, but he didn't score. But uh, um, the yard, it speaks for itself, a uh, definite beast out there today. Kev, uh, how are you doing in your uh, fantasy, uh, in the fantasy world this week? Um, uh, Not too good, not too bad. Uh, I think that's the problem with having a lot of leagues. You just kind of run into problems. You know, sometimes in certain leagues you'll do well, and the other ones you won't do as well. But it is what it is. Good to have you back. Yeah, uh, great to be back. Uh, I was... Uh, not uh, not feeling a hundred percent last week, so uh, I decided to give it a miss. But uh, you guys carried the show quite well. And let me just have a look around to see if there's any uh, a few dishes in the sink. Uh, open the fridge with the uh, see what's in here. Okay. Uh, who leaves half-eaten corn on the cob in the fridge? You know, you don't corn on the cob is not something you eat and save for later. Get that out of there. No, that's Jonathan. They do it. They do it differently in Canada. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, yeah, so you guys, uh, you know, generally speaking, you kept house quite well. Um, lots of news uh, since the Sunday games uh, to uh, catch up on. Um, first and foremost, I think in everybody's mind right now, is that Week 12 is extended to Wednesday at uh, 3.20 Eastern Time. So that'll be, uh, uh, I guess it'll be like, uh, that'll be like about noon your time, wouldn't it be in, in, around lunchtime? On yeah, it'll be around from... lunchtime. I think I'll just take an extended lunch break and see if I can finish watching that game. Yeah. Kind yeah. of a weird, I don't know. It's not going to be a good game. Baltimore's missing, I think, seven starters, and they're missing, I think, fifth, uh, is it 18 people on their normal 53 man roster? Maybe 15, and they can only call up 15 from the practice squad, so they barely have 53 people. All right. Yeah, and of course, uh, Lamar Jackson will not be playing in the game. And right, not to mention one of them is Lamar Jackson. Yeah, uh, RG3 is uh, uh, taking the ball, so. Uh, and it's in it's in Pittsburgh, so <laughs> that doesn't help. Uh, so yeah, that game uh, Wednesday um, it kind of puts a little bit of uh, um, like for for waivers. I don't know how waivers work with this kind of thing, Kev. Uh, yeah, I think you just push waivers to Thursday or Friday since there's no Thursday night football game this week. It should be okay. Um, you oh, there's no Thursday. Have, oh, okay, right. You don't have as well, the Thursday night game was supposed to be Ravens versus Cowboys, but uh, that's right. not going to happen. Right, okay, I see, I see. So, no Thursday night game, because that was going to be right. All right, okay, I see. Yeah, there was no way that was going to happen in any case. Um, uh, Tom Brady, uh, like after the loss against the uh, Chiefs, um, had some choice words to say, if, if I can just get it up here, here of what uh, a reporter asked him, apparently a little bit upset after the loss to <laughs> the Chiefs. A uh, reporter asked him, Hey, Tom, as you, as you head to your bye week, uh, there have been folks who have had some chatter about, you know, you still look like you are running somebody else's offense. One of your former teammates even said on TV that you need a new head coach. What do you make of all that? I hate questions. like You know, questions like that are loaded. I hate it when, but anyways. Brady, Brady says, nah, it's just external noise when you're losing. That's what you deal with. I love playing with the guys that I play with. The coaches, the whole organization has been unbelievable. I think I have to go out and certainly do a better job the last four weeks of the year. So I appreciate it. Let's have a good week. No, he handled that quite well. But it was all taken the wrong way and uh, got a little bit mixed around. And uh, Bruce Arians um, uh, said, it's not criticism, it's honesty. But uh, but Tom Brady uh, immediately left after that question. He didn't take any more questions. So he was, mm, he was a little bit pissed off or something. Something bothering Tom. But I guess, uh, did you hear any more about that? Or? No, I think it's just... Um... 
You know, I think Brady is probably used to having, you know, uh, I wouldn't say a softer Boston media, but a Boston media that understands him a little better, um, understands what he means when he says certain things. And of course, won't won't ask him leading questions like that, which I, I mean, he probably responded to that question as well as he could have. The whole walking out thing is a little, little diva-ish, but um, I, I think it's, it's, a, it's a little natural for him to clash a little bit with Arians considering they're both you know such tenured veterans in the game and I think like Brady said it's, it's just something that comes with losing if they were winning no one would really care about this uh speaking of team tensions Alan Robinson hints at leaving the Bears he becomes a free agent in March uh, apparently he doesn't want to resign uh I don't blame him I don't think the the team is I don't think he's got uh a good quarterback I think he'd be better on another team I mean he's still kind of quarterback proof but I think he could be a lot better with uh, with better quarterbacking. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, like you said, you you can't blame him. Um, The Bears franchise is uh, it's a storied franchise, but I think they're pretty well known for not having great quarterbacks. If I'm Allen Robinson and I started my career with what was it? Blake Bortles, Mitch Trubisky, Nick Foles. And I'd want to go play with a good quarterback. And um, I mean, it makes a lot of sense for him to, you know, join a join up with a better team next year. I could see him going anywhere. I'd want him in Baltimore. Maybe uh, Houston could use him to replace DeAndre Hopkins. Um, anyone would want him. He's been productive for years now, and he's probably one of the top six or seven guys in the league. And uh, more, speaking of bad quarterbacks, Derek Carr, worst performance by a Raider quarterback since Matt McGloin in 2013. Carr has the most fumbles of any act quarterback since he entered the league in 2014. Um, I, you know what? I I don't know about you, but I actually didn't think Derek Carr was that bad of a quarterback. I think it was uh, one of the most streamable quarterbacks, but I mean, this was obviously a bad week to stream him. Um. What's your take on Derek Carr after such a, a good game against the Chiefs and then he just lays an egg? Yeah, I think um it's it's a it's a pretty well known thing that, you know, after an emotional game, something that, you know, you takes you focus so much on uh, on the Chiefs rematch. They probably came out a little bit flat this week since you know they didn't have too much to play for. Um but that being said, yeah, I I'm sure that no one can find any metric that said Derek Carr wasn't a good play this week and he really just, just shit the bed. So that's disappointing, but uh, he has another good matchup against the Jets next week. I don't know. Are you still rolling him out? Uh, I think, uh, well, I, mean, I personally to, wouldn't. Right? I mean, he's a pretty decent streamer. He's a pretty decent streamer. I think he can bounce back. But th- this kind of thing leaves a stain on you. You you, you really feel, well, he's, he, he can't do any worse. But I don't know. But you know something? I will say this. I mean, after bad quarterbacks like Carson Wentz, I don't think Carson, I think the Eagles are going to have to move on from Carson Wentz. I just don't see him. Uh, he's not the Carson Wentz we saw in the Super Bowl year. And uh, and after that, I think the injuries took a toll. He's not as, doesn't seem as mobile. And he's, well, it's not just that. He's uh, watching him pass is sailing passes, like really bad sailing pass, just sailing the ball. And it's, and that one interception uh, to the end zone, and which also I will say, Doug Peterson made a terrible call. You kick the field goal to give your team a chance, right? And but it ends up, it ends up intercepted. I, I don't know what your take is on Carson once this year, but I, I I really think they're gonna have to move on. Not necessarily to uh, to Hertz, but but I think uh, they're gonna have to look to the future. They they might have to move on to him, a la Marcus Mariota, sort of. Yeah, I mean, yeah, once just looks. He looks shook out there. He almost looks like he doesn't want to play. Like he is is getting destroyed. He's not getting much support. Um, he's he's holding the ball too long. He's sailing passes. He's all over the place now. And I think maybe. Um, I mean, I'm a believer in his talent. So maybe he just does need to, you know, kind of take take a step back. And 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 if I'm the Eagles, I think it's kind of time for them to evaluate. I, I mean, Hurts is the other guy. They they drafted him in the second round, so it has to be Hurts. Yeah. Um, and I. I mean, I think after this performance, like, what can you do except play Hurts? Uh, if you stick with Wentz, uh, I would understand if you stick with Wentz because his contract is ridiculous. I think the next he has, he's on contract for the next four years, and if they get rid of him, it's seventy million dollars of dead cap. So um, I think that's why they came out and they said it's mutually beneficial for him to work it out. But that being said, I mean, you have you you're in the race to win the the NFC East championship somehow still. So you got to try to win games and. Uh, uh, Herbs is clearly not doing that. No, uh, but you mean uh, Wentz isn't? Yeah. Wentz, Wentz. Uh, sorry, Wentz not. Yeah, and yeah, and I, I really think that uh, they bring in another guy and they have a quarterback competition next year. 
you know, I think that's what they do. I mean, that's why. Yeah, I, I mean, do. Philly is going to. I mean, they're gonna. They're just gonna spend all year, you know, calling for Hurts to start in the off season. So uh, yeah, it's gonna be rough out there. Yeah, it, it is. Uh, a few of the injuries: uh, Josh Jacobs' ankle sprain. Um, like the rest of the Raiders, he didn't have a very good game. Um, doesn't seem to be he's day to day. Uh, no worries about him, but uh, kind of worried about his production overall this season. Um, I, there are, I think, there are guys that you're playing over. Um, guys like Jacobs and even and even Miles Sanders, like we saw tonight, like like he's getting he's getting. Um, I mean, we're back to this timeshare in Philadelphia. I hate to go back to the Philadelphia, but there's a bit of recency here that I was watching today, and uh, I'm seeing. Bob Austin Scott getting the good, you know, getting the good work, whereas uh, Miles Sanders, and he dropped a bad pass too, so I don't know, I, I, I'm i really off the boil with, with Josh Jacobs and, and Miles Sanders, I, they're, they're not, they're, they're barely RB2 playable to me, I know, and I, I had like kind of high hopes for Josh Jacobs too, because he came out to start the season in September, it looked like, well, okay, this guy is, you know, he looks pretty legit, but They've been scaling back his work. They've been sort of like doing the timeshare like the Eagles are doing. Uh, you know, you're seeing Devontae Booker and, and other guys coming in and uh, taking, you know. I mean, Devontae Booker should not be taking work away from Josh Jacobs, no, right? Yeah, but I mean, we'll talk about it. I think Jacobs had um, came back with an ankle sprain, so maybe that was the cause of it. But that offense overall was, was just bad. And you might be right. Maybe they're just not consistent enough to be every week RB1s. No, certainly not. Julian Edelman on the uh, on the COVID COVID list. Um, uh, no surprise. I think we could name a, I could name a dozen other players that are on this on this list. So I don't know. He's just the latest. There's no sense going into it. The only thing is, is that um, are we trusting anybody on the Patriots offense? I, I mean, it's really hard to at this point. I mean, the one even Cam in Scottfish got me like negative six points. So. Um, I don't think he eclipsed 100 passing yards, but if anyone, I, I still think the only guy you can trust is Damian Harris. Um, even then, he's going to get apparently sni- um, he's going to get vultured by James White of all people. So I don't know. If, you're running a risk anytime you run a Patriots player out there. They can't be more than anything more than like flex plays. You can't be happy about playing anybody. Uh, DJ Moore uh, limped off the field. On, on Sunday, um, x-rays came back negative. Day-to-day, um, I guess, obviously, uh, the arrows point up for Robbie Anderson and Curtis Samuel. Yeah, I, I mean, uh, yeah, I, it's their offense seems to be pretty favorable for, for whoever's out there. So um, it seems like uh, if DJ Moore misses time, then the other two will just soak up the majority of the targets. So, you know, hopefully he doesn't miss time, but... If you have one of those two, then they're pretty good wide receivers. Wide receiver two, wide receiver three-ish. And finally, uh, Will Fuller suspended for uh, performance-enhancing drugs. Six games, I believe it is. Um, so, um, um, Deshaun Watson loses one of his uh, prime targets. Um, he's got to fire to somebody. I guess it's Brandon Cooks, is it? Uh, I guess so. I mean, by default, it's Brandon Cooks. It's Kiki Kotsi. I mean, Randall Cobb is hurt, and Jordan Aikens just disappointed everybody last week with just like four yards so um yeah i mean deshaun is he's good i I feel i feel for the guy they just keep they keep taking his weapon they're getting rid of his weapons somehow i mean and by they i just mean i guess the universe yeah Um, and he, he just keeps having to make do but he is one of the surprise quarterbacks of fantasy this year, I have to say. Um, did a lot better than what I expected. I mean, he's a week in, week out. Uh, you can fire him up every week. He's a top 10 QB1. And uh, But, well, of course, losing Will Fuller doesn't help. Takes away one of his weapons. But, I don't know, I, I, I changed my mind about uh, Deshaun Watson a little bit over the year as, as time has gone on. I think he's uh, I think he's a very sound choice uh, if you drafted him. You, you got you got good value for for where you drafted him. I think. Yeah, I mean he's he's. I think a lot of people were kind of fading him as like a top five fantasy option this year because yeah. he lost DeAndre Hopkins. Yeah. But I mean, Will Fuller stepped up before he got you know, suspended. I mean, it was funny because we all thought Will Fuller was going to miss some games, but we all thought it'd be due, due to injury, not because of you know, PEDs. Um, but I mean, back to Deshaun Watson. I mean, he's he's good at football, and their defense is bad, so he's he's got to be in 
he's got to play catch up a lot of the time. Yeah. Um, the, just taking a look at some of the bad fantasy scores. I mentioned Derek Carr and Josh Jacobs. Michael Thomas, again, a, a big concern. I think we've got to wait until uh, Drew Brees gets back for him to start uh, picking it up. I mean, people drafted Michael Thomas in the first round, and you're not getting it. And, I mean, he's been out most of the year. Uh, he comes back and putting up, you know, I mean, 50 yards is it's not Michael Thomas, is it? Well, yeah, I mean, it's um, two factors. One is obviously Taysom Hill is is not a you know your typical quarterback and on top of that i mean they, they had no reason to throw the ball against the broncos like the broncos uh, that was that was a shit show out there and uh terrible real really no reason to, to throw the ball to michael thomas when you you could have done anything they could have punted every single drive and they probably would have won that game somehow and finally uh just to uh, hammer on the poor old raiders uh darren waller um, a very poor outing uh, for for your fantasy team. So, so yeah, your Raiders were not the team to start. They all did really crap. Uh, on the other hand, on the other side, the good fantasy scores, uh, we mentioned Deshaun Watson, top quarterback of uh, Week 12. Derek Henry, of course, King Henry, just doing it. Um, it's This is Henry's time of year. And uh, Tyreek Hill, the biggest fantasy performance since Jerry Rice in 1995. You have to go back that far to find somebody that scored over 50 fantasy points and and uh in our f6p league i was playing against the guy who has him believe it or not but he also had Derek carr so, so i survived that but uh i wouldn't have if if uh Derek carr had a half decent game i'd be in you know it'd be quite a battle to, this week and i also kev i was against tyree kill in scott fishbowl too but i survived I that <laughs> I survived. Nice. So I survived. I survived that. Yeah, two hundred sixty-nine yards, three touchdowns. Goodness sakes! It's. I think it's a no-brainer. I don't even think. I, I don't even want to go through a token nomination to go anybody to go. I guess you could put no, Derek there. Henry against him, but it's but it's Tyree Kill and uh, Hill. yeah, top tight end uh, Robert Tonyan uh, bounces back and uh, and has a great game. So that takes it. That takes us from the news and then to observation or what we learned and uh, you haven't got anything ready so I will start um, I want to talk about this Aaron Jones Demal Williams split it's something we talked about uh, before the season but it looked like Aaron Jones was being the quote-unquote more more of the bell cow kind of the what we call the 70 30 back you know which he was but this split is starting to change into what we kind of thought about before the season started and it's it's coming true and it's more of a it's more of an even split now between Aaron Jones and Jamal Williams in fact Jamal Williams scored the <coughs> uh scored the touchdown and uh, Aaron Jones was left out in the cold um Kev I I don't know what what do you think of this this, this the, the green bay split here um, yeah, I mean, it's it's kind of been like that all season. Uh, I think the season high for uh, Aaron Jones in, in snap percentage was 71%. And even in his 43.6 um, uh, point game early in the season, he only played 47% of the snaps. So um, Jones is, uh, I mean, this is this was kind of the knock going on to him going into the season was that he's touchdown dependent and he's not going to get awesome volume. Um, but I mean, with the way the offense is rolling, he's going to be effective um, with the, with as many as as little touches as he gets. He's going to be effective, and you're going to play him no matter what. I mean, yeah, I there's think no still... situation when you bench Jaron Jones, and now Jamal Williams is entering flex territory. Yes, and uh, a bit too strongly for a lot of bit of for uh, a lot of fantasy people's taste. Um, I think you would much prefer Aaron Jones to have that extra edge but he's not quite getting it i mean he's out there to start with and but jamal williams is starting to you know show effectiveness and um uh, so i don't know my uh so my observation is that that the the uh, green bay backfield is getting more and more fluid uh as as time goes on uh have you got any observation or anything you'd like to anything at all Come on, Kev. Um, a couple of small ones, I guess. I would just kind of go through. Um, I mean, I had a lot of observations, but nothing really that I really wanted to expound too much on. Um, Antonio Gibson looks like he's on his way to becoming the next great back. He's super talented. Um, the Broncos is that's just a horrible mess of a situation. Just a hilarious game, honestly. Um, I cannot believe they actually had that guy. What was his name? Hinton. They yeah, actually Hinton. had him throwing passes, which is just. 
I mean, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to make fun of him because he was put in a horrible situation. But uh, I mean, if I'm the Broncos, to be fair, I don't really know what I would have done. I think they wanted uh, to try and get one of the coaches to, to put on the pads. I mean, they might as well have had Elway go out and throw some passes. Yeah, probably would have been better. Yeah, it was uh, a bad scene all around. I mean, I only watched it through uh, Red Zone, so but from what I saw, uh, it wasn't. It was just not pretty. It was just plain old ugly, and and it, it's unwatchable football, really. I mean, uh, I mean, basically, the the Saints had a similar kind of offense. You know, Taysom Hill is more of a. Um, he's not your quarterback. Quarterback. He's not a. He's. I wouldn't say he's a like a Lamar Jackson type by any stretch, but he's not. Um, He's, he, his technique of throwing is okay, but it's not near. Uh, it's not NFL quality to me. He's better in his. Yeah, I mean, he's. This is kind of what everyone said. He's a gadget player. He's not an everyday quarterback. No, and I don't know why they don't have Winston. In it. Well, I do know why they don't have Winston in there because Winston Winston is kind of danger zone for them. But uh, yeah, so yeah, observations this week. Uh, I think there's I think there's a bunch of observations that we can we can take away from this week. But uh, one thing I can I can tell you is that uh, is that the Titans are uh, the Titans are heading for the playoffs strong right now. The 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 Titans are looking very strong, especially against that. Uh, a tough defense of the Colts. They did very well, and uh, and uh, the, actually, I was actually surprised that they actually let the Colts back into it. With uh, you know, you can you can allow a team a few garbage points, but they allowed a bit too many garbage points to uh, the Colts, and they were actually you know, the Colts started thinking about thinking hey, maybe we can get back to this. But uh, yeah, Derrick Henry uh, is just he's in a total. Totally uh, different world, and I think that's he's now. Uh, this is his time of year, as it always seems to be, isn't it? But yep, at this point of time, yeah, he just puts his team on the back when everyone's played, you know, ten weeks of football and they're a little sore. That's when his running style becomes even more effective. Yep, it's weird. Uh, it's time for moving on up, Kev. You give us your moving on up guy. Uh, moving on up, I have a guy we touched on a little bit, Curtis Samuel. Um, not. Uh, okay, Richard, let me ask you. Yeah. In standard and PPR, what number receiver do you think Curtis Samuel is right now? Uh, <coughs> I would say he's, I'd say he's easily top 20, maybe maybe even top 15. Oh, okay. You're you're a smarter man than me. I was shocked to see that he's wide receiver 23. Really? Um, yeah, I mean, wide receiver 23. I mean, I think the thing with Samuel is just that he doesn't have too many blow-up games, but he's a consistent source of points and over the last six games he's had double digit points in all but one of one of the games and uh, like we mentioned with the injury to dj Moore, um he's only going to get more involved in this offense um and he's had five plus targets in let's see what is that all of his last seven games so um curtis Campbell is a guy that i'm starting to see as is more of a probably not wide receiver two yet but a very solid wide receiver three very solid wide receiver three and john o uh uh, pointed out this several weeks ago that Curtis Samuel needs to be owned, and he was actually surprised that uh, a couple of weeks ago that Curtis Samuel still wasn't owned. But people weren't trusting him, and you can't really trust him. I mean, you uh, and you don't really—he's not really matchup based. You don't really know exactly what matchup is gonna is gonna work for him. But the good thing is, is that I noticed that with Teddy Bridgewater and uh, P.J. Walker. Um, Curtis Samuel is still uh, a, a go-to target guy, and uh, yeah, Curtis Samuel's kind of come into his own. Uh, he came into the league a bit one of these um, a, a possibility of a of being a, a being a guy, but he's hung around, and uh, I think his time to shine has has come. It might just be this year. It might be next year, but uh, he's definitely on the fantasy map quite solidly, and uh, and uh, and and he, it's a good choice for moving on up. Uh, my moving on up guy. Speaking of, because uh, Curtis Samuel is essentially a pass catching running back sort of. Uh, Austin Eckler. Everybody's happy that he's back, and Justin Herbert seems to like him. Uh, I think he got 16 targets, and that's what everybody wants to see out of this. Uh, offense and the austin eckler everybody wanted his back and he's moving on up just in time for the playoffs awesome kev yeah i mean he's everything we i mean uh, they didn't put him on any kind of a snap count it looks like he got uh, like 11 targets and 14 carries which is everything you want to see you didn't score a touchdown but whatever the way this charges offense is rolling that'll probably come um anyone who held on to eckler for this long i mean you're finally getting rewarded yeah you are and uh 
he's uh, perfectly in in line for uh, playoffs. And I don't know exactly the schedule for the for the Chargers. I don't expect to be too too tough. But the bottom line is is that you've got Justin Herbert there, and uh, Herbert is uh, throwing it to ev- well, he's not throwing it to everybody actually. The only real benefit is going to Keenan Allen. Keenan Allen owners are just rejoicing over uh, Justin Herbert. But now Austin Eckler owners can rejoice too because um, it seems like that... uh Austin Eckler is is his he's got his favorite checkdown right there and uh, not surprising um he was he was Rivers' favorite checkdown guy too so and so it's it's good it's good to see uh panic panic I have to say I'm a little panicked about Alvin Kamara until Drew Brees here this is another thing until Drew Brees gets back this is the this is the thing I I I don't like the amount of work that Latavius Murray is getting uh compared to Alvin Kamara uh, Kamara numbers are not um they're not what you want to see as you, as we come into the playoff uh period and and they're not looking good and and it seems like the guy that's going up is Latavius Murray and not um Alvin Kamara and I I hate to say it but Taysom Hill being out there and running around and doing a lot of the doing a lot of the legwork it's taking away a lot from uh Alvin Kamara um, I, I do believe that Alvin Kamara went without a catch last week. Uh, it might, or it was it this week? Uh, he didn't even catch it. He didn't even catch a ball last week. Was that last week? Yeah. So, um, this is kind of a case where don't you think Kev that just like Michael Thomas, we're <laughs> desperate for breeze to get back. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I mean, I think it's, again, I think it's a little overplayed this game because again, they're playing uh, the Broncos JV squad, uh, so, of course, he put in kind of like the bruiser Latavius Murray to get it done over Kamara, who, I mean, if the game was close and they were throwing the ball, then Kamara's the guy. But um, it is concerning that, you know, his target chair is just non-existent with Taysom Hill, um, which is, you know, half of... I mean, Kamara's not like a top-end running back, but, you know, where he he adds in top-end receiving, so he becomes an elite running back. Um, so if he's not getting that receiving work and he's not getting the, you know, in the red zone, he's also not getting the opportunity to score touchdowns It's Taysom Hill. I think he has four rushing touchdowns in these last two games. Then Kamara's value really takes a hit. Yeah. Um, uh, very, very worrying times. If you, uh, have Alvin Kamara, you still got to roll him out there and hope for the best. Um, the, the main point is, is that the saints are winning and they have the, the impetus of, of trying to, uh, gain, uh, you know, uh, playoff seedings and that are coming into it. So the Saints have have all the will to win. So there's not <coughs> there's not where it's not a case where the team is losing, so they don't have to play Alvin Kamara. They can roll out Latavius Murray. But eh, I don't think uh, I I don't know how you feel about Latavius Murray. Is he can we can we flex Latavius Murray? Or is he just? I mean, I think the thing with Latavius <laughs> Murray. Sorry. Uh, he's he's having that Jamal Williams this role where uh, you know he's going to get maybe eight to ten carries, a good sh- maybe a good shot at a touchdown. Um, so if you need a guy to start just to get you points, just a warm body, I think it's fine. But I don't. I wouldn't count on too many games like last game where he had like twenty four fantasy points. No. Okay. Uh, you got any panic? attack going yeah my panic is <laughs> just the whole denver offense and, and i know it's not their fault but i mean this week they played with the, their like a kick returner at quarterback and now it sounds like drew Locke is going to be disciplined for basically i guess he was the one who was being reckless about not wearing a mask and dress um, goal and and i guess he, right he was the one who basically infected the quarterback room um i don't know if they're infected i think they just had close contact with drew lock who is infected but my, my biggest problem with this is i mean i wouldn't put them on the panic meter unless like since i don't uh, the denver broncos aren't particularly valuable uh, fantasy assets but they did have a really good playoff stretch coming up um, especially the running backs melvin gordon phil Lindsay. uh they were facing kc carolina buffalo and then the chargers who are all and then if you're in an insane league that plays week 17 playoff games uh they were playing the raiders and those teams are all bottom eight in run defense or rushing points allowed to running backs mm-hmm. so Previously, while I was kind of looking at the the playoff run, I had traded for Melvin Gordon in one of my leagues. So a little disappointing that he's not going to kind of get to play all these cupcake matchups. And then on top of that, if you're a Jerry Junior, Tim Patrick, Noah Fant owner, how are you going to trust whoever they put out there? If it's not going to, even if it is Drew Lock, I don't think he's that great. Um, but if it's not, then you you definitely just lost whoever you have. Yeah. Yeah, you're. Uh, it's it's kind of a shame too because I was seeing a a, a 
great upside with uh, Jerry Judy. Um, I think he was, I think he's still a star in the making, but I'm afraid this year that's going to uh, be sinking down. I mean, especially in, in this season of, of great rookie wide receivers. Uh, Judy is one of them, but not now. He's kind of one of the lesser lights like Henry Ruggs now. I think he kind of falls into the, you know, into the lesser lights, but, but everybody else, uh, <clears throat> but I don't know this, this wide receiver, the rookie wide receivers. I don't, I don't know how I'm going to rank him next year, honestly. <laughs> I have no idea how I'm going to rank these because these wide receivers, you know, they, they come into their own in in their second season, you know. So you, we're really going to see uh, uh, some good receivers. I I don't know. It could be we could be going back to the zero RB uh, thinking again. Who knows? Uh, all right, it is time for Mister Unlimited. Gotta be unlimited. Uh, I think it goes without saying, and and I I really couldn't find a. I don't think it's fair to put another nomination in there. Um, we have to go with uh, Tyreek Hill. I mean, I and you know what? Yeah, no contest. Yeah, well, speaking of no contest, I mean, it would have been a contest if I, I really think the uh, – I, I blame the Tampa Bay Buccaneers for, for a very, very poor game plan. Like, Carlton Davis had no chance. The, I mean, he's supposedly he's one of the you – know, one of the better corners. I don't think he is. I mean, well, I don't know if he can cover Tyreek Hill. Tyreek Hill is one of these guys that's very hard to cover. Kind of like, kind of like DK Metcalf. It's hard to cover. But Tyreek Hill. Uh, I mean, especially right now, Patrick Mahomes is. I would consider him. He's the front runner for MVP right now. And uh, when you've got an MVP quarterback throwing you the football. And you and you haven't got proper coverage on Tyree Kill. You're gonna have they just I they just des- destroyed the Buccaneers. I mean uh, a single a single guy. In fact, you know when I was watching the game, I was thinking, does my opponent have uh, Tyree Kill? And and he did. And I was like, I'm thinking, stop, stop. <laughs> Stop. I mean, it's like, you know, you just like, ah, it's, it's, it's like, I mean, I mean, it's only like, uh, it's only like the first quarter's over and it's, he's already gotten a game's worth of fantasy points, like a good game of fantasy points. I'm thinking, goodness, I've got three more quarters to the, of this to go through. And so I'm thinking, well, I hope they get so far ahead that they don't really need to throw it to, to, to Tyree Kill, but he kept getting the catches and he scored and then it, and then a third touchdown. The guy, Tyree Kill, uh, is clearly I still think Devontae Adams is ahead of him for most games. As as if I was drafting today, I would rather have Devontae Adams though. I don't know about you, but mm-hmm. but who would you rather Devontae have? Devontae Adams is I think Devontae Adams is just so steady, and he's probably going to score a touchdown. I mean, he's uh, the easiest bet to score a touchdown every single game. Um, Tyreek Hill, though, like, it's just he is going to have these boom games that no one else is capable of because they don't have Patrick Mahomes. Yeah. Like, there, there's no there's no quarterback in the NFL who's doing what Patrick Mahomes is doing and who can, who can hit Tyreek Hill, like, in stride on these deep throws like he is, and it just makes it look easy. Yeah. So a, a pretty easy choice. Uh, do, you own, do you own him anywhere? Tyreek Hill? No, I don't. I wish I did. Yeah, well, don't worry I will not make that mistake next year. <laughs> He's definitely a good guy to a good guy to have this week, no doubt about it. And he is Mister Unlimited, a, a no brainer choice. Mister Unlimited, gotta be unlimited. Mr. So unlimited, gotta be unlimited. Yeah, that's Mr. right. Unlimited, we got that- it. <laughs> We got it. Okay, uh, so Mr. Unlimited is uh, Tyreek Hill. I guess he got three Mr. Unlimiteds for every touchdown he scored. But uh, anyways, without Jono, we kind of have to go through the waiver wire. I didn't, I didn't fill up our waiver wire list here, so I'm kind of going uh, off of memory and uh, who I think uh, is is guys to pick up. Um, um, I don't know. I don't know how much Debo Samuel is rostered. I know he just came back. I, I don't. I think maybe a lot of people dropped him because he was injured and stuff. So, but um, Debo Samuel got to pick him up. I mean, you're not going to get Tyree Kill out of Debo Samuel, but what we will get out of Debo Samuel is that they use him in a lot of different ways on the uh, uh, San Francisco offense. Um, so he's he's. I guess he's kind of a Swiss Army knife type of uh, wide receiver, but he's a good one. I mean, if they get, if you get get the hands, get the ball in his hands, he's gonna he's gonna score you fantasy points. Um, definitely, a guy you got to pick up. I'm not sure about his 
um, his rostering percentage. But uh, if he's out there, you got to pick him up uh, for me. Got any? Yeah, got any got more argument for me. Um, the only problem is he's he's on sixty nine percent of rosters according to Sleeper. But if he's oh. out there, an easy pick up. Mm. Uh, your turn. Uh, yeah, my waiver wire of the week is another wide receiver, um, Kiki Kuti, and this is kind of just um, going back to what we said about Will Fuller missing time. Uh, he's just, and for whatever reason, the Texans also released Kenny Stills, so Kiki Kuti automatically kind of slides into that wide receiver two role behind Brandon Cooks, especially with Randall Cobb hurt. And uh, Kuti is a guy who I think some people had. Um, pointed out as a potential sleeper last year as a rookie, and he just, just dealt with injuries all year and never really found a groove. And then this year they brought in two new receivers and got rid of DeAndre Hopkins, so kind of everything was a mess. And on top of that, he was injured once again. Uh, but these last two weeks, he's played 50% of the snaps, 50-plus percent. He's got seven targets over the last two weeks. And I think he's going to obviously see an increased role. And again, we talked about how good Deshaun is, and I think, uh, I mean, he's he's worth a shot, a good uh, a talented receiver with a good quarterback. Um, you could do worse. I think I think you're right. Uh, it could be a surprise as well. Um, not as much as a surprise like you like you would like you would want uh, uh, a guy like Michael Pittman or somebody like that. But but he's definitely a guy that uh, if you if you're just getting over the line to get into the playoffs and and you need a guy who who could be having some upside in in the uh, playoff weeks. Yeah, Kiki Kuti, I uh, definitely. Uh, I definitely like it. I'm just going to go into the uh, into the uh, waiver wire rankings here of uh, at Fantasy Pros just to get some get some looks, some names that come up uh, here in the quarterbacks. Um, Ryan Fitzpatrick. Um, what do you think about him, Kev? Yeah, I mean, we all know we're all familiar with Ryan Fitzpatrick's work. If he's if he's healthy and he's starting, then he's um, in good matchup, startable. Mm-hmm. I think he was top twelve quarterback before Tua came in, right? So. Yeah. Um, Two is hurt, so Fitzpatrick is is going to be he's an easy, easy streaming target if you need him. Yeah, and he, uh, I think he helps Devontae Parker definitely. Definitely. Um, yeah, because two is just not quite there yet. Uh, what do you think about uh, n- another name that's topping the list is Devontae Booker? I guess this is on the news about uh, Josh Jacobs. Um, yep, I mean that's just Book- Booker's look good this year in in limited snaps, and and I guess the, if Jacob's injury is a little more serious than it was initially expected to be, then of course you know a starting running back is always you, you should be your number one target. Um, I I see that Jalen Rager is at the top of the list here at at Fantasy Pros. Uh, you know what? He didn't have a very good game against Seattle. Uh, I don't know what his numbers were, but they weren't that great. I think I saw him get targeted once and. I think the 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 guy to own on the the Eagles is obviously Dallas Goddard. Period. I mean, there's nobody else. I mean, not uh, Fulgham was had his had his uh, day in the sun, but he's yeah, that's that's over with. That's all. That's all done. And so yeah. you're pretty much Dallas Goddard. Yeah, because I got all these players back, and just Fulgham sort of just melted back into the hedge like Homer Simpson. So uh, that's um yeah. I mean, the one thing to be careful about is that Ertz is coming back next week, probably. Um, uh, the guy I think though is a hot pickup is Trey Burton. Yeah, not bad. I think Trey Burton is a guy you got to try and get if he's available. I don't know. Is he available in our? Uh... He's probably not. Every probably not. Wide receiver is so thin. Uh, uh well, for t- I'm tight end, right? Yeah. Oh yeah, tight end so thin that I I don't know. Uh, well, let me see if Trey uh, Burton is available. I'm gonna see Trey Burton. Nope. AJ has him. AJ, you jerk. You're out of it. Dump him. Throw him out. Let us have him. I, you know, ever since I traded you, uh, well, you know, I traded you, you know what, you did a very smart thing. You, uh, even though Cam Akers, uh, Jordan Akins didn't do much for you, you sat, you sat, um, Johnny Smith. Um, and yeah, Akins outscored him by 0.4, so technically I am the smartest man alive. Yeah, you have good, good managing skills. Um, other names on the list, Logan Thomas, Dalton Schultz, uh, Jordan Reed. Um, all these guys could have been done better. The waiver wire is very thin uh, going into uh, uh, week 13. So take what you can get, folks. Uh, take what you can get. There's really, really not a, not a whole lot out there. But if you do pick up any of these guys, Kev, we got to drop people. We need to drop people. Who are you going to drop? Out of your roster to get one of these guys. Yeah, there's, there's, there's so many people I would love to drop, but an easy drop for me is Daryl Henderson. Really? Um, he's trending down for like four weeks now. Um, he hasn't played more than 50% of the snaps since week seven. Um, he's averaging about three yards per carry. He's not really catching passes. Um, in his last two games, he has combined 
3.8 half point PPR points. So yeah, he got 10 carries last week, but he turned it into 19 yards. Um, you know, it's it's a three-headed backfield pretty much officially with uh, Cam Akers being the most effective last week, Malcolm Brown playing the most snaps, and then Daryl Henderson honestly just being the most useless of them three. So I think he's an easy drop. Mm. Um, I, I mean, you're not trusting him against. I I just can't. If you're this late into the season, I just can't imagine that you would have to trust him, anyways. Yeah, and that backfield, as you say, three-headed backfield. Uh, even Cam Akers doesn't seem that enticing, even though he's one of the top waiver pickups. That I didn't mention him, but uh, he was on the list of uh, of waiver pickups. But I, I, he's a very lukewarm uh, waiver pickup. My drop is I think you could drop Kirsten Kirk. Um, really gone off the boil the last three weeks. Um, uh, four four fantasy points against Buffalo, seven against uh, Seattle, three against New England. And he's got the Rams coming up, and uh, the Giants is a little bit better. But then there's Philadelphia and, and San Francisco to round out Week 16. I uh, I don't know what it is about Kirk. I just he had that really good stretch uh, uh, that that lasted until after the bye week, but very matchup dependent. And right now, Kyler Murray. Kyler Murray has just gone off the boil, and and it's even kind of harming DeAndre Hopkins a little bit. And there's we're starting to get into this mode where um, Kyler Murray is just trying to get that mojo back. And and when you're trying to get the mojo back, you don't do it with guys like Christian Kirk. Um, you do it with guys like obviously DeAndre Hopkins. And the uh, the Cardinals are really really in 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 a bit of trouble. They they look like a strong playoff team, but uh, they had a good stretch going, but. Uh, things things not looking so good, Kev. Yeah, I mean, uh, the thing with Kyler, and this is no knock on him, is that while he's been having a fantastic fantasy season, he hasn't been that effective or... Um order he hasn't been that effective or efficient as a passer um he's been doing a lot of damage on the ground obviously and he's been doing just okay i mean he's been putting up crazy volume as a passer but the effectiveness just wasn't there and i think he's kind of kind of crashing down to earth not crashing down to earth but he kind of fell down to earth a little bit mm. over these last couple of weeks i mean I, I, what are you gonna do you're not gonna sit Kyler murray he's still gonna be fantastic um just one of those things where uh, the upside <laughs> probably isn't as high as it will be going as it was earlier this season yeah i'm just kind of <clears throat> concerned about playoffs we're getting into fantasy playoffs now and and uh kyler murray's not stepping it up we're seeing um we're seeing right now the power of of uh of good teams like uh like the chiefs and the titans and i guess you could say the seahawks they they kind of had to, all they had to do was walk practically show up for this game which they did but uh but there's definitely power there and um and of course the Steelers who we have yet to see for week 12 but but right now the you need the you need the players that are on these power teams and uh and teams that are kind of on the upswing and I, I kind of mentioned San Francisco in this really Kev uh San Francisco looking a bit strong they beat the uh beat the Rams and in, in uh, on the late field goal and they're very uh, they're on a they're on an uptick right now so um, I think you you really want the players that are on these teams that are that are surging right now for the for the playoff chase and and I would actually I would kind of include um, uh, Washington as you mentioned uh, you know Antonio Gibson we've there's some there's some power there going on so but uh, but teams like the the Ravens and you know like you're if you're a playoff if you're a playoff contender you don't <laughs> you don't put in a pathetic performance like the i mean especially you know no one would expect it against the falcons of all teams too because the falcons you know they're not particularly uh, playoff worthy but i just don't understand i just don't understand the nfl sometimes but and how coaches do their teams but uh, but anyways that's that's kind of like my uh, my thoughts about how you the t- the players that you need to sort of pick up like guys like cam Akers, yeah the rams are the rams are alive but they're not surging you know their defense is great don't get me wrong their defense like no question they 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 nail it every week right now they're one of the hottest defenses and so are the but so are the 49ers and i don't know um i'm, I'm kind of thinking that uh you know your 49ers are, are looking good except my and mostert's back too yep i mean you just worry about their upside with Nick mullins at quarterback but uh maybe he's not even that much of a downgrade from jimmy g yeah uh which brings us to spec ads 
and uh, it's time to do our specs for, to see what our, who we are specking. Uh, I'm going to spec, and this is kind of, I think we're kind of specking Miami running backs all the time, but right now, uh, I think you can, I think a good stash, if you didn't get anybody else from the waivers that you wanted and you want to stash somebody, I think a good stash would be DeAndre Washington, uh, the Miami running back. He could, he could carve out a role there considering all the injuries, you know, like Laird wasn't doing anything and, uh, the Salman Ahmed isn't doing it. He's, he's injured and, and Gaskin, I don't know when Gaskin's coming back. So we're kind of at a point where the Miami will try anybody and, uh, a guy like DeAndre Washington, um, half decent back, uh, could, you know, give you RB2 numbers going into the playoffs. So I would say, yeah, he's a good stash. Thoughts? Yeah, I mean, you never know with running backs. And uh, anytime the running back leads a team in rushes, you, you know, your ears kind of have to perk up and at least give it a look. And he outtouched Matt Braid of 15 to 10 last week. So yeah. who knows? All right. Give us a spec, Kev. Spec. Stash. Yeah. So my spec ag is I'm not sure how seriously I want to take this guy. Um Colin Johnson. Colts, uh, right? I'd never heard of this guy. Colts? Uh Jaguars. 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 All right. Did not never really heard of this guy until Mark mentioned him last week. And um he's a rookie wide receiver, which of course. Uh six six two fifteen. Um yeah, had four catches on eight targets for 96 yards and a touchdown last week from Mike Glennon, of all people. I, I don't know. He's, he's, I don't think he's, like, taking over as the wide receiver one or anything, but DJ Chark is out. So while Chark is out, I think, um, who knows? I mean, I, th- I just think that the rookie wide receiver class is so strong this year that any low-drafted wide receiver could still be just insanely talented, and he just happens to be the 12th best guy in this class. Yeah, I, I, yeah, really, there's been like uh, a load of rookie wide receivers who have who've stepped up and had uh, uh, fantastic seasons. I mean, like, I mean, well, I guess it starts, starts with like Chase Claypool and Justin Jefferson and um, who are some other, uh, other, other guys? I, I know uh, like T. Higgins. T. Higgins got a touchdown even though, uh, you know, bad quarterback and all, he managed to score a touchdown. Um, there's, uh, I mean, there are some bad ones. We could talk about Henry Ruggs, and, but uh, you're right. You know, like uh, these guys, like um, Colin Johnson, I, Michael Pittman is a guy. He's a he's a rookie, right? And uh, mm-hmm. and uh, especially right now, and I, I mentioned this too on a, a previous podcast. Is a, a guy like Michael Pittman right now is is kind of like hot property because he's one of these big receivers and big receivers like you know the monster receivers like DK Metcalf and AJ Brown. They're kind of the in thing. <laughs> everybody wants those mm. everybody wants those uh wants those big guys and uh and Pittman looked great um is the only problem with Pittman is touches or uh targets so I don't know about, about that but but you're right when it comes to Colin Johnson uh why not why not stash stash and see and that's how you get good that's how you get good players is when you stash them and uh and you find out so uh, our closing thoughts for the day for the week Kev. a bit of a, a bit of a uh, a bit of a laid back uh, um, uh, fantasy edge this week but uh, any thoughts going into week 13 with covid and everything else it's, i mean how are we looking i mean the news what something like a wildcat was even suggested like because um ravens players weren't happy and stuff like that and um yeah i mean it's just it's just a wild Week. I saw someone on Twitter say it's just a war of attrition in week 13. Uh, if you have healthy players, congratulations. Uh, you're, you're probably one of the lucky ones. Uh, yeah. And I don't know. I think it's only going to get crazier in these last couple weeks in, in the playoff run. Well, the uh, thanks to the uh, I know the the announcers on Monday Night Football they tried to curse the uh, uh, the commentator curse by saying that the Seahawks have, are the only team that haven't had any haven't had any COVID problems. So you know <laughs> that's 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 one way to jinx a team is by by mentioning it. So I don't know. The last thing you want is uh, an outbreak to happen. But they're talking about. Uh, playoff bubbles so i don't know how that's gonna because apparently the there's been a real uptick in in uh worldwide actually of uh of cases and so forth but uh everybody's mucking through uh before we go though i want to talk about a couple of running backs 
uh, that that we kind of neglect to mention, but um, where where you feel these guys stand in 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 fantasy right now? Um, I want to talk about Dalvin Cook. Where do you uh, how do you feel about him uh, going forward into your fantasy playoffs? Uh, not like in a dynasty, just kind of going forward, right? Yeah, just going forward for um, this season, going into the playoffs. How do you feel about uh, his his? Well, I mean, if, if he's healthy, you play him. Um, Right. If you if he's healthy, you play him, and um, you you don't worry about the rest. Uh, he's the number one standard running back right now. Whenever he does play, he is a good shot for twenty points with a you know obviously the potential to blow up. But do you feel that I mean he's kind of gone off the boil? Is what I'm saying. Uh, over the uh, he went off the boil a little bit this week. I guess there's obviously no concern about him. Uh, he's got Jacksonville coming up next week, um, but. In the playoffs, he's got at Tampa Bay and then Chicago and then New Orleans. Three tough, three tough plays. I guess you just play him and just go with it. <laughs> I mean, what do you? It, no, no, you I'm, must have an insanely good team to to even consider benching Dalvin Cook. No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't bench Dalvin Cook. No. Not suggesting that whatsoever, but I just wanted to know uh, how you're feeling about him going into the playoffs. And uh, Nick Chubb, Nick Chubb, yeah, feeling great about Nick Chubb. Feeling good he's, about Nick he's, Chubb. He's fat. Okay, um, James Robinson. I mean, these are all are these are all clear cut every week RB ones to me. They're matchup proof, completely unfadeable. You play them no matter what. Right. Okay, so yeah, no no concerns. The only, but I will say the only concern I have, of course, and I made it mention in my panic, is Alvin Kamara, and uh, he's the only guy of the top draws that. Uh, eh. You're not getting uh, really what you kind of should be getting from him. Anyways, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I was kind of like just kind of filling out the, just trying to fill out the time because we had a, we had a couple minutes to fill. <laughs> so, so that's time. That's uh, I guess I much pretty much filled up the time. Uh, any final thoughts, Kev? Before uh, and oh, Jono, we look forward to you getting back. And be sure to check out Jono's uh, waiver wire. He uh, does a lot better write up on it. Kev, okay, I'll give you the last uh-huh. word. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't really have anything. Um, uh, good teams are good. I mean, uh, Patrick Mahomes every week just proves he's a freak. Tyreek Hill is so scary just running down the field. Um, just, uh, I, I, again, I, I just think that the story of this season is, is like that one guy tweeted, it's, it's just an old war of attrition, you know, and it's just the, the more, the more you're willing to, you know, kind of peruse Twitter and the news and be able to find out when Todd Gurley is going to miss games, so you can pick up Brian Hill, or you can find out Austin Eckler's coming back, or you can, you know, find out that uh, Kiki Kuti is going to step in for whatever. It's just, um, it, it, this season, it's going to be the smallest thing could possibly win your season. So just uh, all our listeners out there, stay on top of it and I wish you the best of luck. Yeah, good luck with your final week, everybody. Uh, week 13 is generally the last uh, week before fantasy playoffs, although the SFBX fantasy playoffs start this week. So week 13 is actually the beginning, which is kind of odd because there's there's teams on buys, I believe. So, But uh, they got to start it sooner because there's so many teams in it. So anyways, everybody, good luck with your week 13, and I hope that you make the playoffs and do everything you can. And, and, and if you want one tip, Here's one valuable tip that you can take with you. Trust your gut. Um, if uh, if you don't, if you feel your star quarterback isn't is in like it's good bad weather game or the or the weather's bad, I've done this before. Don't hesitate to start another quarterback. It only takes a second, and good. Uh, um, sometimes uh, five fantasy points can make the difference between making the playoffs and not making it. So trust your gut, do your best, and we'll see you next week on the Fantasy Edge. And uh, shout out to John, we'll miss you. Bye bye.